Hello again. This is the Lightning Stalker. Um, continuing on about MIG welding and some of the problems you can run into. Um, I forgot to mention in the other video that you can run into some real serious trouble if you do not handle your uh, shielding gas tank properly. A freshly filled shielding gas tank will contain at least 3,000 PSI of pressure. It's very dangerous. Whenever you move a shielding gas tank, always put on this piece. If it didn't come with one, you better get one because otherwise you could get killed. Because when this valve breaks off, it'll turn into a missile. I heard a story once of a, sh of a tank going through four cars in a brick wall uh, after the valve broke off. So you don't want that to happen. Always use your cap when you're moving your, your cylinders, be it oxygen, acetylene, or inert gas, shielding gas. Now, propane usually has a collar around it so you don't really have to worry about those too much. Um, now the other thing about shielding gas tanks, you never ever want to bring your welder anywhere near your gun or your if you're arc welding your your stick or even your uh, your stinger also called an electrode holder just keep it away from your high pressure tanks um, and of course don't do any welding on your tanks because that will cause a rupture definitely cause a rupture and then you have a missile and you're gonna get yourself killed um, another thing you don't want to weld on is gas tanks or other tanks that have ever contained any hydrocarbons. Like an old propane tank, even if it's empty, the heat of your weld, what it can do is drive out the hydrocarbons that have soaked up into the metal and will cause a very nasty explosion. Uh, it's not as bad as, as welding on a, on a full tank of shielding gas or oxygen or acetylene, but it still can be very dangerous. Uh, I don't know if you've ever gone to the uh, um, Arc Starters webpage. He has a, he has a, a experience on there when he was cutting a propane tank and it exploded on him. Luckily he survived. Um, it's not something you want to do. Um, same goes with gas tanks for cars. Anything oil tanks like for fuel oil or for heating oil you never want to bring your welding equip uh, your welding um, stinger or your gun or your TIG torch or especially not your uh, if you're doing gas welding especially you want to keep that away from anything that has ever contained hydrocarbons um, also when you open your valve you want to make sure that you're not in front of your gauge because that can blow out um, I've never heard of it happening, but I guess it can happen. They always say never stand in front of your gauge when you first turn on your gas. Okay, that pretty much covers the, the shielding gas and the things you can run into with that. Um, any of the other stuff, you want to view the first video. Um, before you start welding, definitely 
because you don't want to get your eyes burned and you don't want to get a nasty sunburn from the UV from your weld, the ultraviolet. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to start, you're going to run a little bead here just so you can see how it works and what to listen for when you're adjusting your feed speed and your voltage. Now on this particular one here I can give you a shortcut if you're using uh, 045 wire flux core wire uh, and you're on uh, 3 sixteenths inch no 330 3 sixteenths inch steel like angle iron that's a very common thickness of angle iron you can you just set your your wire feed speed to around 200 inches per minute or yeah inches per minute 200 and your voltage to 20 so remember 20 and 200 on your 045 wire and your angle iron. Some angle irons a little thinner. If it's thinner you reduce your feed speed and then adjust your voltage or reduce your voltage and then adjust your feed speed until you get an arc that sounds like this. Let's see. MIG mode. Twenty volts. So or O four five flux core wire seventy five twenty five gas shielding gas. <clears throat> this is a kind of flux core that needs shielding gas. Most flux core does not, um, but it should be about the same if you're use no matter what kind of flux core you're using, should be around 20 volts and 200 inches per minute. Um, we're gonna run a short bead here and listen to how this sounds. This is the way you want your your uh, arc to sound when you're MIG welding um, and it's all dialed in this is what you want to look for when you're trying to dial in your your voltage and your feed speed different ways I should point out there's a couple different ways you can hold the the gun. Um, you can hold it like this um, or you can hold it if you're a beginner you probably want to hold it like this just so that you can get it nice and steady. Um, you want to run it about a um, let's see well 10 to 15 degree pull is usually what beginners use or you can run straight in or you can actually do a push um, it doesn't really matter it can be done right all three ways all right I'm gonna do a, a pull bead it's a little dirty I got a wire brush I'm gonna clean off the the rust and the dirt you make sure make sure you grind it with your angle grinder and get rid of all the paint and all the mill scale which is that black uh, corrosion that's on the outside of your of new steel uh, hot rolled steel especially um, 
because that can get into your, your weld puddle on MIG, especially if you're running solid core wire and mess up your weld. Okay, here we go. I hope it doesn't burn a hole in my camera. You want to hold about a quarter inch to a half inch stick out. That means the distance from the tip in there to your workpiece. Okay, we got problems.